Hello everyone. Welcome to the International Free Webinar. Thank you for joining us in this marvelous evening. I am your host for tonight. My name is Rohamina P. Gepor. It is my pleasure to be part of the Institute of Global Professionals. For those participants who are new tonight, uh, please allow me to give you a little bit background about IGP or Institute of Global Professionals. So IGP serves as a resource to students and the community. This Institute of Global Professionals providing holistic social work and education to create a competent generation. We have organized this webinar, training offline and online courses from best and trained speakers, trainers from all over the world to create a best learning platform for all of you because our mission is to empower people and improve their skills. Luckily, we have successfully completed 288 webinars. Tonight, we are proud to present 289 webinar entitled Role of Language in Developing Effective Communication Skills with One competent speakers, speaker rather, from India, Dr. Kiran Kalra. So please, our lovely participants, don't forget to share this webinar in your community. You can also mention your friend's name in our comment box. Then if you have any questions in the presentation, please keep them and ask during our Q&A portion. So without further ado, please help me welcome our brilliant speaker tonight, Dr. Kiran Kalra. Ma, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such a beautiful introduction. It's really overwhelming. And thank you, team IGP, for, in, for you know, uh, making me a part of this program. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to introduce myself, first of all, to all of you. I am Dr. Kiran Kalra. I work as an assistant professor in the Department of English in Government PG College for Women, Gandhinagar Jammu, that's in Jammu and Kashmir. I, am, I, I hope you all are familiar with the place Jammu and Kashmir, uh, India. Today, I will be uh, presenting my lecture on the topic, Role of Language in Developing Effective Communication Skills. Uh, now, under this topic, I would be uh, discussing various topics like communication skills, why communication skills, barriers and strategies for effective communication, role of language, language and communication, skills in business and workplace, language and communication skills in social life, and finally, we will be discussing language is changing. Now, moving ahead, first of all, I would like to, you know, uh, make this statement, you know, this is sort of a disclaimer that the ideas presented in my lecture are not original, but as quoted here, that nothing comes from nothing. Thieflet, no story comes from nowhere. New stories are born from old. It is the new combinations that make them new. So it is the new combinations which will make my presentation new. Uh, now coming to communication. So uh, this is the definition of communication. What we understand by the term communication, a transactional process that involves the transference and exchange of information, facts, thoughts, ideas, 
feelings, attitudes, beliefs, and impressions, and so on and so forth, makes communication. So basically, communication is of two types. The first is, as you can see on the screen, verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Verbal communication is the use of words to convey a message in the form of uh, words, you know. And uh, verbal communication is of two types. It can be oral communication and written communication. In written communication, we have letters, we have texting, emailing, etc. And in oral communication, we have face-to-face -face conversations, speech, radio, television, etc. Non-verbal non communication is use of body language to convey a message. In verbal communication, we use words. And in non-verbal communication, we use body language to convey a message. One main form of non-verbal communication is body language, you know, for example, covering our mouth. This is a gesture used to hide a smile or a frown. Then we nod our heads in agreement and in disagreement. Then we finger tap, you know, uh, which is again representative of impatient or tired waiting. Then arms crossed over our chest, which is a gesture indicating defensiveness or stress. Then in verbal communication, we have semantics, which is, which is concerned with the meaning. Then we have grammar, uh, which is the way we arrange words to make proper sentences. Word level grammar covers verbs, nouns, tenses, adverbs, etc. And sentence level grammar covers phrases, clauses, and so on and so forth. Then uh, another important aspect of verbal communication is the context. Context refers to the setting in which communication takes place. The context helps to establish the meaning and it can influence what is said and how it is said. There are several types of communication contexts, including interpersonal, intrapersonal, group communication, public communication and mass communication. Then in non-verbal communication, we have proxemics, which is a study of space and how we use it and how it makes us feel more or less comfortable. How close you stand next to someone, for example, depends on the relationship you have with that person. Then in non-verbal communication, we have kinesics. It is a communication about communication with body language, with body movements, with your gesture, with your gait, movement of your arms, movement of your legs. That is kinesics. And then, you know, we have paralinguistics. Paralinguistics are aspects of spoken communication that do not involve words. You know, they add emphasis and meaning to what people say. For example, body language, your gestures, your facial expressions, your tone, pitch, they all can change the message completely. So these are two important aspects of communication. Now, the question that must be coming across everyone's mind is why communication? You know, why we have to learn communication? Why so much focus has been, you know, led on communication? So I have an answer for that. No matter what job you have in life, your success will be determined 5% by your academic credentials. 15% by your professional experiences and 80% by your communication skills. So, you know, I hope now you can know the importance of communication skill in your life. 
G.B. Shaw, one of the greatest playwright of English literature, has said that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So we all know that communication is important. We all are aware of the fact that communication skills play a vital role in our lives. But still, you know, not all of us are good communicators. But communication is a skill which we can acquire. It is an art which we can develop. So we need not be, you know, we need not lose hope. We can acquire the skill. We can acquire this art. Now, I would like to share an interesting story with you. Jack and Max were walking away, uh, walking from religious service. Jack wondered whether it would be all right to smoke while praying. So to this, Max, his friend, he replied, why don't you ask the priest? So Jack goes up to the priest and asks, priest, may I smoke while I pray? The priest says, no, my son. You may not. That's utter disrespect to our religion. So Jack goes back to his friend and tells him what the good priest told him. To this, Max replies, I'm not surprised. You asked the wrong question. Let me try. And so Max goes up to the priest and asks, Priest, may I pray while I smoke? To which the priest eagerly replies, by all means, my son, by all means. So the moral which you get from the story is the reply you get depends on the question you ask. The way you communicate is very important. So if you ask your boss, can I work on this project while I am on vacation, instead of simply asking for a vacation, there is a high probability that you will get the permission for your vacation. So therein lies the importance of communication. Now, as you can see on your screen, you know, you cannot not communicate. Now, this is very important because we communicate at all times. Even when we are sitting alone, in a corner of a room, looking at our mobile phones, we are communicating. Because everything communicates. The clothes you wear, your body language, the mobile phone you are carrying, the posture in which you are sitting, they all communicate by their friends. Next point you can see on the screen is, you cannot say what you mean. I'll just try to explain this to you. It is very difficult to convey what you want to because everyone will have a different way of understanding things. Often we assume that when we communicate, the person we are talking to will interpret what we say in the way that we mean it. But that isn't the case my dear friends. So it is dangerous to assume that people always understand your message the way it is intended. And this can be especially treacherous in the world of business. Next point, my dear friends, is whatever you will say will have an impact. Whatever you say will impact others. You can make them smile. You can make them cry laugh you can make them feel bored also so whatever you say will have an impact on others next point is first impressions last the clothes you wear your body language which makes your first impression they always last then be interested instead of interesting you know so it is a matter of respect. Listen not to respond but to understand. It makes people trust you. So it is 
important to be interesting, but it is more important to be interested. And finally, body speaks louder than words. So your hand movements, your eye contact, your facial gestures, they all make an impact. Now, why communication skills? Why do we need communication skills? Because it helps to get better response from stakeholders. It leads to strong business relations. It leads to increased productivity. It helps in problem solving. And it helps in decision making, no matter in which ever field we are, whether we are students, whether we are teachers, whether we are professionals, communication skill is something without which we cannot work. So as you can see on your screen, we have four important communication skills. They are speaking, listening, writing, and reading. This is something which we are taught right from our childhood that the more we listen, the better we speak, and the more we read, the better we write. So, being a teacher of English language, I often suggest my students that they should start listening and reading. I often ask them to begin by listening to good news channels, reading newspapers, because reading is a habit that needs to be cultivated. Now that takes us to some good communication skills. So these five skills are absolutely necessary for successful communication in the workplace or private life. The first being listening. Listening creates an environment in which everyone feels safe to express ideas, opinions, and feelings. Second being straight talking. Conversation is the basis of communication. No communication is possible without conversation. And one must not neglect its importance. Then comes nonverbal communication. Nonverbal signals are wordless communication, body position, facial expression, hand movements, gestures, they all are important. Then comes stress management. Misunderstanding other people send confusing nonverbal signals and use funny patterns or behaviors. And finally, emotional control. It is an important tool to understand others, to understand yourself and to understand the message that you send. Now coming to these points one by one. First comes listening. Now many people confuse listening with hearing. So please keep this in mind that listening is not the same as hearing. It is one of the most important aspects of communication. Successful listening is not just an understanding of spoken or written information, but it is also an understanding of how the speaker feels during communication. One should listen not to reply, but to understand. Careful listening can create an environment in which everyone feels safe to express ideas, opinions, feelings, plans, and they can solve any problem in a very creative way. So listening is a very important skill. Then comes straight talking. Conversation is the basis of communication. Even a simple, friendly conversation with a colleague can build mutual trust and even detect problems before they become serious. A healthy dose of chatting with an unknown person can lead to a business opportunity. So initiate a conversation while you are traveling, you know. You can start a conversation 
with the person sitting next to you. You can initiate a conversation by, you know, these simple questions like, how are you? Or you can simply start a conversation by saying, what a pleasant day. Or it is so hot today. And you never know, you know, this can help you in building a lifelong relationship with that person. Then comes non-verbal communication. Facial expressions are responsible for a huge proportion of non-verbal communication. Consider how much information can be conveyed with a smile or a frown. The face is often the first thing we see even before we hear what they have to say. The facial expression for happiness, sadness, anger and fear are similar throughout the world. Deliberate movements and signals are an important way to communicate meaning without words. Common gestures include waving, pointing and using fingers to indicate numeric amounts. Paralinguistics refer to vocal communication that is separate from actual language. They include factors like tone of voice, loudness, inflection and pitch. For example, uh, the most common question which has been asked is how are you? To which you know most uh, probable answer is I am fine. But how you actually say these words might reveal a tremendous amount of how you are really feeling. A cold tone of voice might suggest that you are actually not fine, but you don't wish to discuss it. A bright, happy tone of voice will reveal that you are actually doing quite well. A somber, downcast tone would indicate that you are the opposite of fine and that perhaps your friend should inquire further. Then your body language, your postures, your arm crossing, your leg crossing, they all are important, especially if you are appearing for a job interview, they all will matter. Then comes proxemics, the amount of personal space needed when having a casual conversation with another person. It usually varies between 18 inches to 4 feet. On the other hand, the personal distance needed when speaking to a crowd of people is around 10 to 12 feet. Then eyes, they play an important role in nonverbal communication and things such as, you know, looking, staring, blinking are important non-verbal behaviors. Communicating through touch is another important non-verbal behavior. There has been a substantial amount of research on the importance of touch, especially in infancy and early childhood. So that is why the touch of mother's hand is so important. Then your appearance your choice of color, clothing, hairstyles. Imagine me wearing a fluorescent green jacket here in this presentation. You know, will you take me seriously? No. So your choice of color, your clothing, your hairstyle and other you know, factors affecting appearances are also considered means of non-verbal communication. Then artifacts the objects and images are also tools that communicate. Your house, you know, the way you keep your house, they also communicate a lot about you to your guests. So they all form non-verbal communication. Then another important aspect of communication is stress management. In small quantities, though stress can be useful and encouraging for work, 
However, when the stress becomes constant and com completely begins to take effect, it can affect communication. It can affect the clarity of opinion and appropriate behavior and action. So when you are under stress, you may misunderstand other people. You may send confusing non-verbal signals and use funny patterns of behavior. So stress management is also very important for communication. Then comes emotional awareness. Emotion, control, feeling play a big role in communication. It is the ability to understand feelings. It will help you succeed when communicating with other people. If you are emotionally aware, you will communicate better. You will notice the emotions of other people and how the way they are feeling influence the way they communicate. You will also better understand what others are communicating to you and why. Sometimes, Understanding how a person is communicating with you is more important than what he is actually saying. So emotional awareness is a very important aspect of communication skill. Now coming to some tips for better communication. So first of all, check your emotions. Because when we are emotionally challenged or emotionally charged, we are more concerned with having our say than we are with communicating. Then we should check the listener's emotions because sometimes it is unavoidable, but it is best not to attempt communication when the other person is experiencing high emotions before the conversation begins. Then uh, choose words which are familiar with the other person. People connect better with words they already have a relationship with. Uh, then ask for understanding. Don't assume they know what you mean. Ask them to repeat back what they hear you to say. It keeps them involved in the communication and it ensures that the communication actually occurs. These are some more tips for better communication. Uh, approach we take, you know, so we should see a, a communication as an opportunity to share ideas instead of feeling scared or threatened. Communication opens a world for us. So we should never hesitate to initiate a communication. Then it is important to keep in mind the audience we are talking to. We should keep their knowledge and expectations into consideration. Then the context we choose is important. The timing. Timing should be correct. The emotions. The location, the geographical place should also be taken into consideration. Then structuring our com communication is important because structures make things easy to remember. Chronological structures like problem solving benefit structures, they always help the listeners to remember the things. So these are some of the tips for better communication. Then apart from this, choosing the right words is very important. There are two kinds of meanings. One is denotative meaning, which is the literal meaning of a word. For example, literally, uh, the word stubborn means a person who does not change his or her stance. But the connotative meaning is the suggestive meaning and it refers to one's own judgments, feelings or perceptions about that word. So this word stubborn can be interpreted as a strong-willed person which is a positive connotation and it can also be you know interpreted as an inflexible person 
which is a negative connotation. So when we are choosing the words, we have to make our choice very carefully so that the words connotate the correct meaning. Now next is grammar. Grammar is again a very important component of communication. In grammar we have in English language we have verbs. Verbs we know they convey an action like bring, read, walk, run, learn. They also convey an occurrence or a state of being. Then verbs have tenses, present tense to indicate that action is being carried out. Then we have past to indicate that action has been done and future tense that indicates that action will be done in the future. Then we have prepositions which indicate relationships between other words in a sentence. Many prepositions tell you where something is or when something happened. So grammar has to be taken in mind. It has to be taken care of when communicating. Now moving on to barriers of communication. So these are some of the things which hinder a process of communication. First of all, it is language or linguistic barrier. Language and linguistic ability may act as a barrier in the process of communication. Regional colloquialism and expression, expressions may be misinterpreted or even considered offensive. So that will hinder the process of communication. Then we have psychological barriers. Psychological state of the communicators will influence how the message is sent and received. Then we have, you know, uh, for example, if someone is stressed, they may be preoccupied by their personal concerns and not respond to the message, then that is a psychological barrier which is hindering the process of communication. So stress management is an important personal skill that affects our interpersonal relationship. Anger is another important aspect of psychological barrier to communication. When we are angry, it is easy to say some things, you know, which we may later regret and also to misinterpret what others are saying. More generally, people with low self-esteem may be less assertive and therefore may not feel comfortable communicating. They may feel shy or embarrassed about saying how they really feel or read unintended negative subjects in messages they hear. Then we have physiological barriers. They may, uh, you know, uh, come out because of receiver's physical state. A receiver with reduced hearing may not physically grasp the content of a spoken conversation. Or if there is a background noise, physical barriers uh, like geographical distances between the sender and receiver will create a problem in the process of communication. Then we have systematic barriers to communication, which may exist in the structures and organizations where there are inefficient or inappropriate information systems and communication channels. Then we have attitudinal barriers to communication, which may result from personality conflicts, poor management, Resistance to change, lack of motivation. So these are some of the barriers to communication. Then there are some more common barriers to effective communication, which includes use of jargons. Jargons are complicated, unfamiliar or technical terms. Then there are emotional barriers like, you know, taboos, 
uh, which deal with politics, religion, disabilities, sexuality, sex, racism, or any other opinion that may be seen as unpopular. The lack of attention or interest or distractions on the part of the receiver may lead to a uh, hindrance in the process of communication. Then differences in perception and viewpoint can also be a barrier. Physical disabilities such as hearing problem or speech difficulties is also another barrier to communication. Now, I'm so sorry. Right now, strategies for effective communication. Now that we know that you know these are the barriers in the process of communication, how we can make the communication process effective. So these are the some of the strategies which I would like to discuss with you. They can help in you know improving the process of communication. So first of all, we have active listening. Active listening includes 100% attention to the person who is speaking and even hearing the words that have not been spoken by concentrating on his expression and the nuances of speech. Our body is very expressive and says a thousand words even without opening the mouth. So, Body language is very important. Then emotional intelligence, which is the capacity of a person to manage, interpret, and respond to any given situation by understanding and looking at the emotions of other people. So emotional in intelligence is very important. Communication is between two or more people, but you cannot override the feelings of others. If you are interested in maintaining a proper and open channel, pay special attention to articulation and enunciation so that the tone of your voice sounds correct. You can record your voice and listen to it to understand any discrepancies. Speak slowly and calmly so that the quality and tone sounds perfect. Use concepts and language that is simple and clear so that everyone can understand you properly. It is not about you, but how others perceive your words that is important. So avoid unnecessary words and also using hi-fi words that are difficult to understand. Then small talk. It is a meaningless conversation that we conduct to put others at ease. It is considered as one of the top 10 communication skills as it opens doors for further communication between the involved parties. Then comes empathy. So this soft skill includes understanding the viewpoint of others and making adjustments accordingly. Respect. Respect yourself as well as others. If you want to conduct <coughs> and maintain a fruitful and long-lasting relationship, respect is important. Excuse me. Uh, then comes feedback. Feedbacks are not only verbal and written, but you can also get a good feedback by looking at the body language of the other person. When you ask something, it means that you have been listening to the other person and you are trying to understand his viewpoint. So asking questions is very important. It invites further dialogue and facilitates an important connection. Make sure you are not interrupting someone when you are asking questions. Wait for a pause or the time when questions are encouraged. 
Now that takes me to the next part of my presentation that is language. Why language? Why language is important? Here I am not focusing only on English, but every language is important. You may communicate in any language, you know, but language is important because language is what makes us human. It is how people communicate. It is a complex system of words, structure, and grammar to communicate effectively with others. There is a very interesting story from Bible about languages, that why there are so many languages in the world, you know. And uh, there is a story called Tower of Babel. Uh, it is a biblical myth, which is an origin myth meant to explain why world's people speak so many different languages. So I would like to share this story with you. According to the story, a united human race in the generations following the great flood, speaking a single language and migrating eastwards, comes to the land of Shinar. There they agree to build a city and a tower tall enough to reach the heaven. Uh, God, observing the city and tower, became a little scared and he confounds their speech so that they can no longer understand each other. And thus he scatters them around the world. So this is how, you know, so many languages came into being. Now next is language matters. Yes, language is very important to culture and society. It is important for business. It's important for individuals and their development. It is important for personal communication. I would like to briefly discuss all these uh, points. The first for language and society and culture. Without language, it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, for men to engage in complete social interaction. Language is the major instrument through which knowledge, values, norms and capabilities of a social group are passed on to new generations. All the agents of socialization, that is family, school, church, industry, etc., they all require language in order to socialize. Major elements of culture are acquired and developed and transmitted by means of language. Language pervades all activities involving culture. Even learning in society, whether in a formal or informal setting, is connected with the help of language. So, <laughs> transmission of knowledge in both simple and complex societies is largely conducted by means of language. So we cannot imagine a society, we cannot imagine a culture without language. Now moving on to language at workplace. You know, it's very important. In workplace, the body language, the hand movement, the touch, eye contact, they all play a vital role in conveying a message. Then listening, a uh, very important skill, uh, even at workplace, it plays a very important role in communication. Then clarity and consistency is very important. Clarity is one of the main ingredients of successful workplace communication. If others cannot understand what you say or if you make things complex to convey, a basic message, people will be disinterested and they will not listen to you. So keep the message brief and clear enough to let others understand easily what you want to convey. You should be polite 
and friendly to involve your team members in a dialogue that is frank and open you need to approach them in a welcoming tone and most of all uh, it is important to stay confident confidence is very important now uh, one thing which i would like to you know uh, uh, elaborate is you know you should be clear in your thoughts and ideas and you should say try to say things in fewer words you know because this is important the more you say the less people will remember what you have said so if you can say you know your thoughts you can express your thoughts and ideas in limited words people will remember and i have a very interesting story to share with you on this uh, topic uh, there was one a monastery <coughs> that had very strict rules the monk took a vow of silence and no one was allowed to speak at all there was just one exception to this rule that every year monks were permitted to speak just two words so after his first year at the monastery a monk was summoned to his annual meeting with the head monk and the head monk said that it has been one year what are the two words you would like to speak so the monk said bed hard thank you replied the head monk one year later the monk was again summoned to the head monk's office and he said it has been one more year what are the two words you would like to speak so this time the monk said food or food i see replied the head monk yet another year passed by and the monk once again met with the head monk who asked what are your two words now after these three years i quit said the monk well i can see why replied the head monk all you ever do is complain now you may well be wondering what has the story to do with communication skills the answer is simply this the more you say the less people will remember what you have said so if you have found that story amusing you will almost certainly remember it and be able to tell it to others had each of the three conversations between the monk and the head monk been a paragraph or too long uh, you would probably struggle to remember it and most likely not bother much the same goes for your communication with your prospects and customers if you want them to remember what you said aim to convey your message powerfully and with as few words as possible and maybe with a short story because stories sell so this is an important aspect of communication then we have a uh, language for individual and uh, personal development language opens doors to understanding one's own culture and beliefs surrounding other cultures this experience can lead to personal growth and a deeper understanding of yourself learning a new language is a really effective way to exercise your brain power for the brain to learn a foreign language a new language or improve existing language languages there is a lot of recognition for new rules that follows this improves uh, negotiation problem solving abilities and reading skills learning a new language can unlock many new skills with the learning of a new language its culture and confidence level rises the more languages you know the lesser the risk of degenerative diseases yes it is a study which has proved that you know the more languages you know the lesser you have the risk of degenerative diseases as you grow older you take to work better when you are well versed in another language this is also a huge bonus when you are applying for a job 
because a potential employer will be glad to hire a person with immense understanding of a culture outside their own. So career opportunities are brighter for people who know a second language or more. It sharpens your decision making. Uh, deciding how to employ certain expressions and when to take uh, and when to take words and phrases as they should be taken improves your reasoning and decision making. So, an overall increase in critical thinking skills is an integral part of language learning process. Knowing another language is a ticket to understanding other cultures. Learning a new language can broaden linguistic abilities in your native language as well. So, I have another story to share with you at this moment. And this is a true story. Uh, Back in December 2019, before COVID-19 took hold of the world, Philip Kessler and his wife Karen wanted to leave their home country, Austria, to explore the world. Before the pandemic locked down most of the world, the couple quit their jobs and started to plan their around-the-world adventure. But their plans had to quickly change as borders started closing. So after travelling Europe, the pair found themselves locked up in Mexico, where every day became an opportunity for Philip to immerse himself in the Spanish language and culture. He began each day studying Spanish grammar, vocabulary, before venturing out to put everything he learned into practice. Everyday tasks like grocery shopping, taking a bus, getting a haircut became an eye-opening and quite literally um, a fruitful experience for Philip. So when a local market vendor taught him about an exotic fruit that he had never seen before, Philip realized how rewarding it was to connect with locals in their language. So, my dear friends, most of the time, people are happy to see you at least try to speak their language. You know, we just have to make an attempt and we will find that the doors of the world are open for us. Language is a tool with which we can interact with others. Language reflects a person's level of education. It indicates authority as a law of force. It attracts customers. Uh, now, quickly moving on to how language is changing. Language is not static. Nothing is permanent in this world. Nothing is static. So is language. The movement of people across the countries and continents are responsible for the change in language. Then cultural changes also lead to changes in language. Advancements in technology New slang terms, they all lead to change in language. And, you know, this COVID-19 has brought in so many new words in English language. So we have, you know, words like contactless. We have doom scrolling. Doom scrolling is essentially the process of scrolling through your social media feeds and reading all the negative headlines in rapid succession. Then we have PP, personal protective equipment, quarantine, WFH, work from home, lockdown, asymptomatic, sanitizers, Zoom bombing. Zoom bombing is uh, with restrictions of movements, office meetings and lectures moved in online mode and that was some when some mischievous students started sharing the meeting IDs with their naughty friends who then went on to crash the Zoom meetings, often saying something rude or profane or anything that is unwelcome by the attendees. Then we have a new term coming up like antibodies. Antibodies are two friends who have tested positive for COVID-19 antibodies and hence can hang out together. Then we have communication. It is when you get paid not to work and have lots of extra time at your end. Uh, 
So since language is changing, we can make new words by borrowing from other languages, by compounding words, by blending words, by making functional shifts, by squishing the words, by using abbreviations. So uh, these are some of the stolen words. We have cafe from French coffee. We have chocolate, which is originally Zokolati in a Nahuati language of modern day Mexico. Then we have bungalow from Bengali and uh, Hindi. We have jute from Bengali word juto. So uh, these are some of the stolen words. These are compound words, you know, when you combine two words and you make new words like coffee table, bookworm, up to date, long term, mother in law, high tech. Then you can make blended words by combining two or more words like motor and hotel makes motel. You have breakfast and lunch and it becomes brunch. Education and entertainment becomes entertainment. Electro and execution becomes electrocution. Then uh, you can also make new words by using functional shift, like you know, adds. You can you know uh, add one cup of sugar to the mixture is a verb, but he has all the latest ads on for his computer is a noun. Father is a noun. He's the father of a beautiful girl. He fathered the entire village. So it becomes a verb. So this is how you can make new words. Then back formation. You can squish the words. Editor becomes an edit. Butler, battles. Bulldozer, bulldoze. Burglar, buggle. Right? Uh, then we have abbreviations. Uh, we use shortened forms or initials to make abbreviations. Like CM, AM, VIP, MR, Mitro. Then we have acronyms and eponyms. Atlas, Malpropism, Nassau, ASAP. So these are the ways by which language is changing and new words are coming up. And with new techniques, you know, we have texting which is a new thing which is coming up, mobile texting, because of which a new language is emerging. We are writing as we speak. We call it fingered speech. New structures are coming up. We have no punctuation, no capitalization. LOL stands for laughing out loud. It is also a marker of empathy and accommodation. Then we have slash, you know, when we have to change a topic uh, while texting, we write slash. So many people say that, you know, texting is decline and fall of writing. But I believe, you know, it is a new form of writing which is emerging, which is writing as you speech. So uh, that takes us to the end of the lecture. But before ending, I would like to just uh, have a quick recap. So communication is important. Communication can cause wars. It can also cause peace. So don't hesitate to communicate. People don't remember what you do or what you say, but they always remember how you make them feel. So always empathize, listen to listen, know your audience, take communication as an opportunity and not as a threat. Language is important and so is body language. And quick reminders, don't forget to smile, give compliments, be polite, stay confident and don't forget the three words. That is sorry, please and thank you. Saying thank you is a very important part of communication skill and I would like to thank all of you for patiently hearing uh, this presentation. Thank you once again. All right. Thank you so much, Mom, for your wonderful presentation. And although we we observe that you are not feeling well, but still you deliver your lesson very clearly. So.
So thank you so much, Mom, for your remarkable presentation. And you're right, communication is very important. I couldn't imagine what would this world be like if human didn't communicate. What maybe uh, without communication, I think everything will come senseless, right? Life become emotionless, and it's impossible to imagine the world without communication. So I think if we cannot understand each other, so. It's, it's very difficult, very difficult. So that's why communication is very important. And thank you so much, Mom. I love your words. I love your stories. And you know, the two uh, boys when they went to ask the priest. So I like that. So um, it depends on you how you ask a question, right? Mm -mm. Yes, so that's a very important strategy, Mom. So thank you so much once again, Mom, for your wonderful presentation. And to our lovely thank participants, you. please help me to thank Doctor um, for his one for her wonderful presentation tonight. Okay, so thanks a lot, Mom. Then it's time for our quiz competition then later on we will have our q a All right, I'm here again for our quiz competition. So everybody, please go to www.slida.com and our code for tonight is ITP quiz. So everybody, please don't forget to use your complete name when you join our quiz competition. Okay, hi, mom. Uh, Melanie, Sir Nico, Melinda. Okay, so please use your complete name for our quiz competition tonight. Okay, very good. Again, our code for tonight's quiz competition is IGP quiz. Dr. Rajesh, Mom Emily, Albert Legaspi, Jeffrey. Okay, so please keep on joining. Code is IGP quiz. And this is also available in our comment box. So our uh, first question, eye contact is which type of communication? Verbal or nonverbal? Yeah, I think something. <laughs> Okay, so first question, eye contact 
is which type of communication is it verbal or non-verbal and yes you are right that is non-verbal and 97 percent of the participants get the correct answer Okay, right now, Sir Rumel is the top one. Let us move on to question number two. Question number two. To emphasize, empathize means... A, understand and share the feelings of other, or B, to have sympathetic, sympathetic attitude. Okay, that is for question number two. To empathize, empathize means A, understand and share the feelings of other, or B, to have sympathetic attitude. Okay, so the correct answer for question number two is A, understand and share the feelings of other. And 91% of the participants got the correct answer. And still, our top one is Sir Rumel. Let us move on to quiz number three. Okay, question number three, which of the following shows a positive facial, facial expression, expression? I think uh, internet issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm so sorry for that. Um, let us wait. He, uh, our um, what is this? What we call for this? Because I think right now, uh, our moderator also uh, has a internet issues or technical problem in his side okay as you can see i'm so sorry for that So let's wait. Sir Kamrul, are you there? I think he has a problem presenting the quiz. So I'm so sorry for that, for the 
technical issues or technical problem. Hello, Sir Basi, Ma'am Marisa, Ma'am LB, and to all our participants. Sorry for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what question we are now? Question number four. Okay, question number five. Which of the following includes the tone, speed, and volume of voice? Body language or part? language yes mom it is in the side of uh, second rule who are presenting the quiz. Okay, so the correct answer is para language. And mm. uh, 91% of the participants got the correct answer. Our technical team is facing a problem. So question number six, using abbreviations in communication leads to which type of communication? A, organizational or B, language or linguistic? Okay, so the correct answer is language and a linguistic okay so once again our technical team has a problem so i'm so sorry for that so we cannot avoid this one <laughs> due to the weather also Okay, so question number seven. Special words or expressions used by a profession or group are called A, abbreviations or B, jargons. Okay, so the correct answer for question number seven is jargons. Yes, and 78% of the participants got the correct answer. And right now, Mom Anna is the top one, followed by Sir Elias, Melinda, Carol, and Kinalyn Villar. Okay, so um, let us move on to question number eight. Okay, thanks a lot our lovely participants for your active participation in our quiz competition. Okay, so let us move on to quiz or question number eight. Colloquialism are generally blank in nature. It is geographic or technical. Yes, Mama Marie. Okay, so the correct answer is a geographic and 51% of the participants got the correct answer. Yes, Mama Marie. Network difficulty because of the type one. Yes. So please understand and so sorry for this. Mm -hmm. And to all my kababayan in the Philippines, mag-ingat po kayo lagi. 
Okay, so question number nine. Which of the following is a communication barrier? A, anger. B, money. Okay, so the correct answer for question number nine is... Mom Geneva said anger and you are correct. So very good. 100% of the participants got the correct answer. And the last question, question number 10. And now uh, still the top one is Mom Anna followed by Car Carol and Elias. Okay, so last question. Which of this is a barrier to communication? A, poor listening or B, active listening? Okay, again, 100% of the participants got the correct answer. That is A for listening. Okay, so let us check who's the top one for, who are the top one for tonight's quiz competition. Okay, congratulations. Actually, congratulations to all of you. You are all winner. Okay, so our top 10 for tonight quiz competitions are Mam Anna, Carol, Elias. Okay, um wow, very good. 10, 10 over 10. Congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to all of you. Okay, so we will post your certificate later on. And once again, congratulations to all of you. So now let us move on to the last part of our program, which is the Q&A. And please prepare your question. Again, mom, good evening. Are you ready for uh question and answer portion? Yes, yes I know. Hundred one percent ready. <laughs> okay, so to our lovely participants, please. Yeah, I would like to <laughs> write your uh, question to all the winners. Yes, mom. Yes. Okay, so everybody, please um, write your name in our write your name write your question in our chat box. Okay, and uh, Doctor Kiran is happy to answer all your queries or your answers. 
question rather. Okay, mom, we have one question from Mom Marife. Uh, with the given constraints during this pandemic and gadget addiction, how can you help us, the teachers, let the learners communicate? They tend to be passive in online class, mom. Okay, what a wonderful question from Mom Mir Mirapet. Thank you so much, mom, and good evening. Okay, mom, so um, what can you say, mom? Thank you very much for this question. It is indeed a very fortunate question because mm -hmm. even as a teacher, uh, I also face the same problem that most of the students, they tend mm -hmm. to be passive in online classes. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely this is a problem, but as a teacher, you know, we have to encourage them to come up to come out of their cocoons, to come out of their shells and participate in the classroom discussions. In fact, you know, uh, this uh, online teaching has given the students an added advantage, you know, that they can switch off their cameras and they can turn mm -hmm. on their mic and speak. So many students, they feel comfortable to speak that way. So we should, you know, encourage them to speak in whatever manner they feel comfortable. And, you know, with the help of with the, because of this pandemic, a new way of teaching has come up. You know, the world has becoming, has become a global village, really, you know. We can attend any class, you know, taking place in any part of the country, sitting at, you know, in, in comfort of our homes so i think you know we should utilize we should see this as an opportunity rather than seeing it as a handicap or a hindrance in the teaching learning process or in uh, learning communication we should see this as an opportunity where we can learn from the teachers who are sitting in other parts of the country by using this online class and definitely, you know, we as teachers have to find new different ways to encourage students to participate in, you know, classrooms, whether it is online classroom or offline classroom. Mm -hmm. We have to put in, you know, extra efforts to bring the students out of their comfort zone and mm -hmm. we should make them participate in uh, teaching learning process. That is all I can yes. say. Yes, yes, that's that's correct, Mom. We have to encourage, motivate the students because I think all of the teachers are facing the same problem. How to make, exactly. how to motivate the students to listen, to join in Google in a online class. So as a teacher, so we really need to motivate our students encourage them we have in a new normal in the new mode of teaching so as a teacher we need to encourage the students to to learn to learn more and to enjoy the online teaching okay so sir Ad, Ad Hikari, again thank you so much mom for your wonderful answer how to remove network barrier <laughs> So I think okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. How to remove uh, network barrier? Yes, okay. uh, this is mm -hmm. a barrier. You know, we do mm -hmm. because there are. I think Mr. Adhikari is from India, and in Asia we do face this problem that there are many large areas, mm -hmm. there are many small towns where internet facilities are not available. Students are not going to school. They don't. They can. They can't attend. You know, they are not able to attend online classes. So that network issues remain. But still, you know, as a teacher, you know, 
we have we also have to play a role of corona warriors you know this is the term which we mm. use for doctors teachers are corona warriors you know during this pandemic during this tough time teachers have continuously played their roles uh, the rest everyone was on corona vacation you know corona vacation but the teachers were on duty 24 into 7 with the online classes you know the school timings were not restricted from 9 to 3 or 8 to 2 in the morning mm -hmm. so we were active with all hours at 11 pm at night and as teachers mm -hmm. it was we have taken it as our responsibility to respond to them so yes mm -hmm. despite of medical barriers you know we have to start conversation you know conversation is the basic yeah. of communication yes. so when we start you know this conversation you know we simply ask the student how are you you know or how 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 you are doing you know in the times of covid 19 the student will feel mm -hmm. comfortable mm -hmm. he will feel you know he is in a safe environment and he will definitely respond to you and the communication process will then start and i'm sure you know we can take this process ahead you know this process can continue for a longer time this is all i can yes, say yes 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 that's true mom that's true mom and very wonderful answer you know so uh although this this time of pandemic we have to or the students must feel that we are still caring or we are uh like um as because as a teacher we are the second parents also right mom so exactly. uh, okay. yes yeah, so we have to message them how are you because in this time of pandemic their mental health is also affected right exactly. so exactly. <laughs> okay so mm -hmm. yes and again mom thank you so much for your wonderful answer And another question from Sir Basser. I hope, sir, I pronounced your name correctly. And good evening. What are the factors influencing the academic performance of the students amidst of the pandemic and its implication to their academic development in the new normal? Very nice question, sir. And thank you so much for that, mom. Yes, uh, okay, a very pertinent, a very pertinent mm -hmm. question, very pertinent mm -hmm. question. That yes, you know, we all know that academic performance of the students has, you know, mm -hmm. suffered a lot during this pandemic, and many minds and many mm -hmm. jokes have come up, you know, uh, which. which relate to the academic performance of the students uh, during this covid times uh, pandemic mm -hmm. yes but we have to you know we have to learn to live with it we have to learn to live with it we have to learn we have you know we can't stop you know we can't be static you know everything changes in nature and we have to adapt ourselves you know to the new, this new normal we have to we 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 were never you know uh we never thought you know, even in the wildest of our dream wildest of our dream that you know one day we will be wearing masks we will be wearing pp kits you know we will shy away from going to parties we will you know we will be locked up inside our home so we never thought we never thought about this but now you know as the times are changing we are also changing we are learning to live with this new normal uh, the academics have no doubt suffered students are not going to schools they are not having one to way communication with the teacher the communication process is no doubt hindered you know uh, the subjects in which you know they need labs they need to perform experiments you know they are suffering because they cannot do experiments sitting at their homes so yes you know a new normal is coming up but still you know at the mm -hmm. same time many students are making use of this time you know the time which is now saved in traveling you know, going to school uh 
you know, takes a toll on students, you know, when they, are when they have to travel. So that traveling time is saved. So many students are making good use of that time. They are learning additional languages, you know, they are doing extra courses, they are learning animations, you know, and they are, uh, you know, uh, enhancing their skills, you know, they are uh, improving upon their skills, you know, and this it, you know, students can do this, you know, if students can learn new languages uh, during this pandemic, if they can spare uh, the time, you know, because they cannot go out to play, you know, they cannot go out for parties, you know, they cannot go out to malls. So if they spend that time in learning a new language, obviously, you know, uh, when the normalcy returns, and we hope it returns very soon, so then, you know, uh, this <laughs> will definitely <laughs> the academic <laughs> development. So this is all I can say as a teacher. Yes, and thank you so much for that wonderful answer. Yes, indeed, it has many factors influencing the performance of the students, especially their academic. Okay, so again, sir, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful answer. And again, from Mom Marife, Mom Mirafe. Okay, thank you, Mom. How we wish to have the face-to-face -face classes to really connect with them personally. <laughs> exactly, as a teacher, you know, we love to see the beautiful faces. We love to see the smiles on the faces of students, which we miss, you know, in online classes. We love to connect with them, no doubt. There's no doubt to that. And we wish, you know, that day comes very soon when we can, you know, again, go back to school and colleges and get to see those lovely, beautiful faces and have fun to an interaction mm -hmm. with them. We all wait for that day. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes, that's true, Mom. We, we pray that everything will be okay very soon. We can see the beautiful and handsome faces of our students. <laughs> yes, there is a limited face-to-face -face classes, so uh, still we have also the online already, and we also have the blended learning, so I hope communication will still continue, or to this pandemic um, will also, or this pandemic will not a hindrance to uh, give a quality education to our lovely students okay thank you so much mom mirafe for your second question thanks a lot mom and so mom thank you for your wonderful answer okay from mom jen lean i hope mom i pronounce your name correctly so what other teaching strategies can we employ to develop students focus especially students with special needs yes very uh relevant question mom so especially if we have a online class how can we address those students with special needs can we, can we hear your answer or opinion uh, I would say that, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not skilled enough to give a proper answer to this question. But still, you know, I would like to attend it because, yes, we do have students with special needs. We have children around us with special needs. So they need a little more pampering. They need a little more attention as compared to, uh, the other students, but uh, yes, you know, if we don't make them feel, you know, that they are inferior to others in any way, you know, that is the moral responsibility that lies with us as teachers, that we should never make them feel that, you know, they are different from others and, you know, uh, yes. they should 
you know uh, different in a, in a, they should attend you know different classes you know they should have their lunch or dinner you know uh, separately they are not allowed to mingle with the uh, with other students so that will be wrong on their part but yes you know our teachers all that we can do is you know uh, to pay a little more attention to them to their needs to give them lots of love uh, to talk to them and to you know let them be themselves you know uh, to let them mingle with other friends you know let them make uh, we should allow them to make friends and we should allow you know them to uh, you know flare up the skills you know whatever skill they have you know we have to find that out and we should encourage them to improve their skill to work on that particular skill so that you know later on in their life they can become self sufficient you know they are they can they are employable they become employable they can get jobs for them themselves so that you know they can earn for their living you know as teachers this is all that we can do and we can boost up their confidence we can boost up their morale and encourage them to achieve greater heights in their life okay. this is all we can do. yes very clear yes we special students need more attention yes so thank you so much dr kiran for your wonderful presentation tonight thanks a lot mom. okay so <laughs> To our thank lovely you so participants, please let us yes, thank. Yes, I think, Mom, we covered all. We covered all the questions. So I think no more questions. So please let us thank Dr. Kiran for her wonderful presentation tonight. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. The pleasure is mm -hmm. all mine. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Okay, so um, our website is still not available. So please collect your e certificate when the our when the website will be okay. So please take note of this topic: role of language in developing effective communication skills okay thank you mom marisa thank you mom aida mom marian mom marivik musa basir and to all the participants thank you so much and have a good night to all of you please take care thank you